ear to be a hearing ear, every mind to be an open mind, every heart to be a receptive heart. For, Father, the entrance of your word gives us light. It gives us understanding. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God, as a result of it. We thank you it provides a solid foundation whereby we can build upon. And it produces life. And, Father, we praise you for it all. And we give you all the glory in advance for all that shall take place in every heart and life. In Jesus' wonderful, precious, and holy name, amen. 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 Praise God. All right. If you would open your Bibles to... Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we, we've been teaching on the subject of faith and healing through this whole week, morning and evening services, and we're going to continue along that line. This morning we left off here and in Romans, <coughs> but we're going to go back and look at it for the sake of those who didn't have the opportunity to be here this morning, and uh, go back and look at some of these things because they're very important to us. Hallelujah. Notice what it says here in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen? And so when we look at that, it tells us that faith is the substance of things that we hope for. Now, we talked about that this morning concerning the subject of hope, okay? Now, you have a couple of different aspects of hope when you look at it in Romans, the fourth chapter, and we'll turn over there in just a moment. And when you look at it from different translations, it helps us to see it a little bit more clearly. But Abraham, remember, Abraham was 100 years old, and Sarah was 90, isn't that right? Whenever the child came. And so who against hope, the Bible talks about, believed in hope. So who against hope, which is natural, just natural, wishful thinking. And it is natural, wishful thinking for a 100-year-old man to think that he's going to have a child with a 90-year-old barren woman. Yeah. If you take a 100-year-old man today and a 90-year-old woman, take him to the doctor, and they say, we want to have a baby, uh -huh. the doctor's going to look at him and say, are you crazy? Yeah. Huh? And so, you know, you take back then, I mean, now they have all this modern sciences and all these fertility clinics and all these things that they can do, you know, that they didn't have back then. And so if a woman was barren her whole life, it's pretty hard for her to conceive and have a child at the age of 90. Amen. However, she did, didn't she? Amen. 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 Why? Because God made a promise to the man of God 25 years earlier. He told him when he began to deal with him, he told him that his wife was going to have a child. So he waited for 25 years. Amen. How many realize that's patience? Amen. See, we have a hard time waiting 25 seconds or 25 minutes or in 25 days. Mm -hmm. He waited 25 years, but the promise came just like God told them it would. Amen. Amen? Because he continued to trust God and rely upon God, okay? So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, okay? So it's the substance of things that we hope. Now, the hope that we need to be operating in is based upon what God's Word says, all right? Now, let's look at it from this standpoint. You hear the word of God or you read the word of God for the first time or you hear somebody teach you that Jesus has bore your sicknesses and your infirmities and with his stripes you're healed. Well, if you're battling a terminal disease and there's that hope that comes, that glimmer of light that comes, couldn't be. Isn't that right? You hear that. You know what? Do I have to die? Maybe I don't. And so there's a hope that comes. It rises up on the inside. There's a spark there that says, you know what? Maybe this situation can change. It's hope because it's still out in the future. You haven't got it settled in your heart yet. So you're reaching out. You see hope. You've got a glimmer of hope because the Word begins to produce that, and you begin to develop an expectation. And as you begin to develop an expectation, then you have to do something with what you're expecting. Amen. You have to begin to feed yourself upon the Word of God because faith comes by what? hearing and hearing by what the word of god it's the word if you want faith in god you have to listen to what god's word says and not what everybody else's word says you have to listen to what he said amen and so you have to begin to look at the scriptures and find out what the word says concerning this particular subject of healing amen does god want me to be healed can i be healed find out what the scripture says about that and as you begin to read and study those scriptures and you begin to meditate on them just like like the Bible tells us to, as you begin to meditate upon them and think upon them and ponder them in your heart, then what happens, that gets out of your head and gets down in your spirit, man. 
Remember Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So when the Bible talks about the heart of man, it's not talking about a muscle that pumps blood. It's talking about the spirit of man. Yeah. Because that's where real life comes from. Amen. When God formed man out of the dust of the earth, he breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. What he did is he put spirit in man. And when that spirit went into man, then the man began to live. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. And so you can take an actual physical heart out of a man and hook him up to a machine and they can live without a heart. But you take a spirit out of a man and he can't live no matter how many machines you take those machines loose. He's a dead man. That's just the way it is. If his spirit's gone, he's gone. That's just the way it is. Are you all with me now? But you take their physical heart out. Come on now. You can hook them up to a machine without a physical heart. But you take a spirit of man out and man won't live. He ceases to exist. All right. So. We understand that we have to get these things down on the inside of us. Now, we looked at this earlier in the week, but when we think about even salvation, we look at Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe where? In your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you have to have it settled in your heart. You can't just have it in your head. You have to get it in your heart. And it takes time for you to get it out of your head and get it into your heart. That's why the Bible talks about meditating in the word day and night. That we may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then we make our way prosperous and then we have good success. So you have to spend time meditating on the word. This doesn't just fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree. You have to spend some time and put some effort into it. Amen. Oh yeah, God's the one that made it available to us. But we have to stand on the word and we have to exercise faith in the word. And we have to release that in order for us to receive that. Just like for you to be born again, even though Jesus has already paid the price. Even though he shed his blood at Calvary, even though he died in our place, took upon himself our punishment and rose again to give us right standing with God, Amen. we still have to accept that and acknowledge that for us to be born again. Yeah. Just because he made it available for all mankind doesn't mean all mankind's enjoying it because they're not. Are you all with me? It's those that have accepted Jesus Christ that have been born again and become new creatures because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ... Yeah. Then he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But you have to be in Christ in order to become a new creature. So you have to be born again. And that comes by believing something in your heart and confessing something with your mouth. What do you believe? You believe that Jesus died for your sin, took upon himself your punishment, and then rose again for your right standing with God. He declared you righteous because he paid the price. It wasn't anything we could do. We're not righteous by any works we've done, all because of the work that he's done in the redemptive process. Amen? Why? Because he has wrought for us a complete and total and perfect redemption. Amen? And he took care of us not just spiritually, but he also took care of our physical well-being as well by bearing upon his body stripes that took our sicknesses and our diseases and gave us health. Amen? Are you all with me now? Praise God. Hallelujah. So now let's look back here at Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to switch. I'm going to switch to the Amplified Bible. And just for the sake of helping us to see it, the Amplified just does that. It amplifies it. It gives us a little more insight, a little bit more light to understand what's being said to us. And so when we look at this in the Amplified Bible, watch what it says here. It helps us to really grasp some reality that you really can't grasp with the King James Version. Now watch this. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for. Now let's look at that for just a moment. Faith is the assurance. that If I'm assured of it, then I know I have it. There's no question about it. It's the confirmation. Amen. We talked about it this morning. If you are going to book a hotel room somewhere... You had better get a confirmation number that that room belongs to you because you might show up, you know, six months later, you know, for whatever it is you need to be there for. And then you go in and say, listen, I booked this room six months ago. And they'll ask you, do you have a confirmation number? And you say, well, no, I don't. And they say, well, we don't have any record of you booking this room. We're sorry. You don't have a room. But if you have a confirmation number that says that room belongs to you, it doesn't matter if they've overbooked that room or not. You might be going from that room to the presidential suite. They're going to put you somewhere. That's right, that's 
Are you listening? Why? Because you have a confirmation number. It's proof that that room belongs to you. When it says it's the title deed, when we buy an automobile, we get a title for that automobile once we've paid that off. That automobile becomes ours. You go in and pay cash for it, you get it instantly. If you don't pay cash for it, you pay it over a period of time. And once you paid that final payment, then the bank releases that title to you. And now you own that car. And it doesn't matter who comes up and tries to tell you, hey, that's my car. You said, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's my car. You said you got the title? No, but I do. I got the proof right here. This belongs to me. Amen. See, faith, that's what faith does. Faith is proof that what you hope for belongs to you. Right. Now, how can I say that? Because faith is based upon the word of God. Amen. And the word of God tells me I have the thing God promised me. But let me just say this. When it comes to, to uh, being born again, when it comes to spiritual life, okay, when it comes to divine healing, and when it comes to prosperity, and we're talking about in biblical terms, we're not talking about trying to become a multi-billionaire. We're talking about in biblical terms, all your needs being provided for. Hallelujah. All your bills being paid. God wants your bills paid. He doesn't get glory out of you not being able to pay your bills. God wants your bills to be paid. He wants us to have, you want, he wants us to have full, abundant provision full supply that's enough to meet all of our needs and enough left over to be a great blessing to somebody else and then the way you bless others will determine how much more god can get to you amen, amen. hallelujah and if he can get that through you we said that earlier in the week if he can get things through you he'll get more to you but if you amen. keep trying to hoard it up for yourself then you'll stop it up and you won't get that much anymore but you start letting it go and god will bring more to you Hallelujah. Amen. But God wants you to be blessed. Why? Because we have been redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. We have been redeemed from those three things. And be honest about it. They're not promises. They are biblical facts. It's a fact that Jesus bore sin for man. It's a fact that Jesus bore sickness and disease for man. It's a fact that God wants us to be blessed and prosper. It's an absolute fact. It's a biblical fact. It's not a promise. It's a fact. And so we can stand, listen, in the face of the devil and say, devil, you're a liar because God made it available to me and I'm laying hold to what God gave to me and you can't stop it in any way, shape, or form because the Bible says it belongs to me. Hallelujah. Why? Because I have proof of ownership. Where? Right here in this book. Right here. Right here in the Word of God. Amen. So now let's look a little further here. So now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for. It all starts with hope. It all starts with that glimmer. We hear that. Jesus bore your sicknesses with his stripes you're healed. So we hear that. And all of a sudden that hope springs up. And we see that glimmer of light. So what do we do? We start feeding upon the word, what the word says about that. And as we begin to feed upon the word and meditate on it, it begins to get down on the inside of us. And the more we hear it, the stronger it gets. The more we look at it, the stronger it gets. The more we speak it, the stronger it gets till it gets to that place that you have it settled in your heart and you know that you know because faith, remember, faith is the title deed. Faith is the proof of ownership. Faith says, it's mine. I have it now. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Now, well, what if I don't see it with my natural eye? Well, let's keep reading here. All right, it's, uh, it, now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things, notice, the proof of things that we do not see. The conviction of their reality. We're convinced. Conviction, or we, you, you hear people talk about, do you have any convictions? Well, I've got this conviction that Jesus bore the price. Jesus paid it for me. He bore my sickness. He bore my disease. And with his stripes, I'm healed. I've got a conviction on the inside of me because the Bible tells me it's so. And because I spent time in the Word of God, studying the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, it's produced a reality on the inside of me that this belongs to me. It's mine. And it's the same way for you, but you just have to get it settled in your heart because I got it settled in my heart. I know that you couldn't talk me out of it. All right, now watch. Let's read a little further. It's the conviction of the reality. Faith, this is what I want, really want you to see. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not yet revealed to the senses. 
Let me say it again. Faith perceiving as a real fact what is not yet revealed to the senses. See, this is the thing about faith. Faith grabs a hold of it before you ever see it with your natural eye or feel it with your natural body. Faith perceives it done as a real fact, even though your senses haven't got a hold of it yet. Are you all listening to me? Amen. And that's a big deal. Because if you wait till you see it to believe it, you'll never see it. You have to believe it first, and then you see it. Amen. And that's why in Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says, Whatsoever things ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. When you pray, that's when you believe you receive, not when you have them. Because when you pray, you believe you receive, you release your faith. Hallelujah. They're coming. They're coming. Are you listening to me? That manifestation's on its way. All you got to do is just keep standing up because you know by faith it's yours. And if you just have, listen, having all that the crisis demands to keep on standing, keep on standing. Amen. Stand and you'll see God's power. You'll see it manifest. You'll see it happen in your life. But it doesn't always happen instantaneously. Sometimes it does, but it doesn't always. The Bible talks about that when it comes to healing. It said, we lay hands upon the sick and they recover. Recovery is a process. Reco if you go to the doctor, this is what gets me. People will go to the doctor, maybe they have an infection in their body. So they'll go to the doctor, and the doctor will give them a shot of an antibiotic. And then maybe prescribe them antibiotics in pill form, you know, or capillate form, for them to take for the next two weeks. Now, from the moment that doctor gives you that first initial shot of that antibiotic, from that very moment, it begins to attack that infection. Yeah. That's right. But you don't see it attack it. You don't even feel it attacking yet. You still got the pain. You still got the discomfort. But yet people have faith in God and what the doctor said, and they keep taking those pills because the doctor says, now take these other ones four times a day. And keep taking them till they're all gone. And you know what? People don't think one bit about taking those things four times a day. See, the healing process started at the very moment they gave that initial shot. And then it continues to work out as they continue to take those pills. It keeps working until all of a sudden, one day, they notice a difference. Pain's gone. Discomfort's gone. But you don't stop, listen to me, you don't stop taking them because the doctor said take them till they're all gone. Are you listening? So if we'll do that for a doctor, then how much more should we be willing to take God's word? Amen. And when prayer, you know, when prayer is made for me, when hands are laid on me, God's power is released to flow into my body. That healing process starts right then, just like the shot the doctor gave you. That healing process starts right then. And from that moment on, it keeps working. But you got to keep taking what the word said and you got to keep speaking that like medicine every single day. God's power is working in me, affecting a healing and a cure from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet driving out every symptom and you keep taking that in you keep speaking the word every single day hallelujah and you keep standing listen to me and that recovery process continues to work until all of a sudden one day you wake up and every symptom's gone you're like whoa hallelujah every symptom's gone but it was a process now thank God it, it can happen instantly I've seen it happen many times instantly to people. I've seen people instantly come out of wheelchairs. I've seen people instantly have blind their blind eyes open. I've seen people instantly healed. I've seen their legs grow out. I've seen their backs healed. Amen. I've seen God heal all kinds of things. But I've also prayed for people that was dying with cancer, diagnosed, they had get, and given two weeks to live. I remember, uh, how many of y'all know Dr. Lester Sumrall? Yeah. You know who Dr. Sumrall is? Yeah. Mighty man of God. His first cousin, George, actually he's named after Dr. Sumrall's dad. His first cousin, George, his wife, Thelma, had gotten cancer. They live in Houston, Texas. Actually, just north of Pasadena. Right off of Fuquay there, if you're going down the highway, heading towards Galveston. And so she got cancer. 
And so they went and did surgeries on her. They removed all of her lymph nodes. She had to have what's called the Job's pump put on her arms and pumped up. It's like those things you put on a baby, you know, you pump them up so they can swim out in the swimming pool, you know, keeps them afloat. Well, there's, there, that's what a Job's pump is. It's like this, this plastic sleeve you put over and then you pump it up with air because all the surgery, the stuff was just kind of just, it was hard to keep it all in place. So they had to put those Job's pump on there to do that in her arms where they removed the lymph nodes out of her arms and stuff inside of her arms and down inside of her, you know, under her armpits and stuff. And so when we got to see her, doctors had given her two weeks left to live. And I mean, she's, when we walked in, you know what death warmed over looked like? I mean, it looks like it's, it's just that death warmed over. I mean, she just looked like she could drop dead at any moment. And I remember as we was going over there to pray for her, the Lord spoke to me and said this. He said, I want you to give her four scriptures. And he said, I want you to tell her to take those scriptures and confess those scriptures 50 times each, four times a day, just like she's taking medicine. Remember we talked about in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, my son, attend my words, incline into my sayings, keep them in the midst of, you know, keep them from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. For their life to those that find them and health, that word health literally means medicine to all their flesh. He said, I want you to tell her to take this like medicine. And he said, if she'll do that, then you can pray for her, but if she won't, you can't. Why? Because she's got to keep her faith alive. And so we walked in that room, and she, we had to make an appointment to get with her because she was so sick. And so they, we walked in, sat down in the kitchen, and she made her way out and sat down at the kitchen table. And, I mean, she was just as feeble. Her hair was all gone. I mean, just, just like she's ready to die any moment. And so I said, I said, Sister Summer, I said, this is what the Lord said to do. Will you do what the Lord said to tell you to do? She said, absolutely, I'll do that. I said, all right. I said, I can pray for you. And so I laid my hands on her. Now, my wife was there. My oldest son was there. He's not here right now. But Alice, John, Alice's sister, and brother-in-law was there. God was there. When I went to lay hands on her, the power of God came down through my head and shot through my body, went out my arm into her body. It, went, it, was, it knocked me backwards. Just about knocked me flat on my back. Just shot out of me like that. I said, whoa, I mean, it just went right into her. But you know what? She didn't look any better. She looked just as sick as she did when, we, when I laid my hand on her. She didn't look any better. I said, now listen. I said, I know that power went into you. She said, I know it did. I felt it. I said, now you're going to do what the Lord said? That's why the Lord told me. Ask her if she'll do this, and if she will, then you can pray for her. But if she won't, don't. You can't because she's got to keep her faith alive. And so the next time I saw her, now she's got two weeks to live. The next time I saw her was 18 months later. And we went by to see her. We pulled up in her front yard. And her husband George was out there raking leaves. And when he saw us, he just dropped the rake and just ran in the house. And, and here she come running out with him. And I mean, she's got a brand new head. Now, now she was in her 60s. She got a brand new head of blonde hair. Blonde hair. And she's totally healed. You couldn't even tell it's the same person. She's totally healed, completely healed. And listen, 20 years later, she sent a videotape for one of our anniversary services. Hallelujah. Testifying about how she's still healed. She went back to the doctor. And when she went back to the doctor, the doctor didn't know who she was. Because the last time the doctor saw her, she's dying. And so he, she walked back in a couple months later, and she's totally healed and looks totally, you can't even tell, she's totally healed. And he says, who are you? He says, I'm the woman you said is going to be dead in two weeks. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God raised her up. God healed Amen. her. Amen. Now, listen, listen, listen. I asked her, I said, now, tell me what happened. She said, you know, you, you came in and told me, the Lord said, asked, said, you know, tell me if I would do these things, you could pray for me. I said, yeah. She said, and then you prayed for me. And I said, yeah. And she said, you know, the power went into me. I said, yeah, I remember that. But it knocked me flat on my back. And she said, but I didn't look any different. But she said, I knew the power was in me. And she said, so what I did, she said, I just started doing what you said. And I confessed those scriptures 50 times each, four times a day, just like I was taking medicine from the doctor. 
And she said, for the first couple of days, I didn't see any difference. But after a few days, I started noticing something. I started feeling strength. I started feeling things in my body. I started, I could tell. I could tell there was a change. Something was happening. Man, it's just all over me. Glory to God. She's, it's, I could tell it was happening after the first week. Then the second week, it just got better and got better and better. And she said, Man. then it just, the whole thing turned around. My hair grew back, everything, you know, and I'm totally healed. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. You see, she had to keep it alive. Man. The recovery pro process started at that very moment. We laid hands on her. Faith perceiving as a real fact was not yet revealed to the senses. It took her keeping her faith alive. Man. By saying what the Word of God said. That's why God said, make sure she'll do this. Why? Because it's keeping your faith alive. That's why we lay hands on people. We give that little mini book about how to keep your healing. And you need to read that book. Don't take it home and throw it up on the you know, shelf. Read that book and do what it says. Why you give us that book? Because then I don't have to spend all my time going to every person individually and explaining it to them. You can just read it for yourself and do what's in there. Because it's full of the Bible. It's full of the Bible. Do what the Bible says. Keep your faith alive. Hallelujah. See, she didn't see any difference immediately. She didn't see anything. But it happened. Now, another instance, we was in DeSoto, Missouri, doing a tent revival in 1988. And so, while we're there doing the meeting, there was a gentleman that was a coach at the local high school. And so he came to the meeting, and he had a radio show on the regular secular station there on Saturday morning right after the swap shop. You don't know what a swap shop yeah, is, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Somebody trading, a, you know, a plow for a, for a disc or a lawnmower yeah. for a rototiller or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Swapping anything. And so anyway, so it's a secular radio station. Saturday morning, he's got this program on right after the swap shop. Mm -hmm. So you can see in rural areas, because this is a rural area. So if you have a swap shop on your local radio station on Saturday morning early, what are people doing? They just got through eating breakfast, listening to the swap shop, see if somebody's got something they want to swap for. And they're sitting there drinking coffee in the kitchen. Well, that's what was happening there in the soda, Missouri, too. And he had us on the radio. He said, the Lord told me to have you come on the radio. And I asked the Lord about it. He said, yeah, I want you to go. And so we went and got on the radio program with him. And so anyway, we got on the program. And... Uh, a guy called in because it was a call-in program. And when this guy called in, he said, my daughter has had convulsions ever since she was 17 months old and at least five a day. And now she's 34 years old. And he said, she's having a convulsion right now. And he said, the Lord said to me, some years ago that he was going to send a prophet to this town that was going to pray for my daughter and she'd be delivered he said i believe you're that man i said well i don't know if i am or not i said but i'll sure enough pray for her and so and i now i know why god wanted us on the radio program and so right there on that public radio program I mean that you know that secular radio program on saturday morning right at the swap shop can you see the farmer sitting there drinking their coffee yeah. i can see him yeah, yeah. I took authority over the devil. She's right in the middle of a convulsion. I took authority over the devil and commanded that devil to turn her loose. And when I did, he started shouting. He started screaming at the top of it. He said, it stopped. It stopped. He said the convulsions had stopped. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I remember the DJ, you know, he had his little booth over here, you know, with his equipment stuff. When we started out that program, he was sitting there with his back up against the window, you know, and he just leaning back there. When I got through taking authority over that devil, he had his face stuck up against there. His lip was smashed flat against that window. He was looking to like, what on earth just happened on my radio station? Amen. And I told the man, I said, now bring her out to the tent so I can lay my hands on her. Bring her out so I can lay my hands on her. And he said, well, I can't tonight. I thought, are you serious? Your daughter was just in the middle of a convulsion. She's been having them since she's 17 months old. She's 34 years old. She's had at least five a day. We just took authority over the devil, and you tell me you can't bring her out? I thought, what is wrong with you? I can't come tonight. We got something else going on. I said, well, bring her Sunday afternoon. He said, okay. 
And so anyway, he brought her out Sunday afternoon. And sure enough, she, he told me, he said she hadn't had a convulsion since. Now think about that. At least five a day from the time she was 17 months old. And now she's 34 years old. She's had at least five convulsions a day. And now she has had not had a convulsion since. Now that's good news, isn't it? Amen. And so she's sitting right here. We had multiple sections, but we had this big center aisle right here. She's sitting right here. And when I looked at her, her eyes, she was, you know, her eyes was swimming in her head. I mean, literally, you know what I mean? And her eye walls were just going around in circles. And so I laid my hands on her and commanded that thing to loose her and never come back. And when I did, her eyes popped perfectly straight. And she was perfectly normal. So while I'm preaching in that service, you know, there's a gentleman sitting over here in this section way over here. And so while I'm preaching, he just jumps up and starts running down to the front. I said, brother, hold on. I'm not done preaching yet. Sit down. I, when I get done preaching, I'll give you an altar call. Yeah, yeah. So he sat back down. And so I get to preaching, you know, so I get over here. Because every time I get over here, he jumps up and starts running down. I said, brother, sit down. I ain't done preaching yet. So well, why didn't you let him come? Because I knew in my spirit, if it would have been something I needed to deal with, I would have knew it in my heart. And I knew that he, I didn't need to do with that right now. He can wait. So finally, I got through with my sermon. And I said, all right, brother, come on down here. I said, what is it you want? He said, you got to come pray for my wife. Well, see, that's why I knew it wasn't something he needed to do because he wanted me to come out to his house and pray for his wife. All right, all right. Well, I got things to deal with here. I got people here that want to be touched by God. They want to be healed. They want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I got something to do. I got to minister to these people. And I said, well, we'll get to that after the service is over. He said, she heard you on the radio. When you cast the devil out of that girl. And she told me, go get that man, bring him out here. So we went on with the service, you know, prayed for several people, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Several people were born again, had a great time. Amen. And so then I asked him, I said, now, how far is it? I said, why would you ask him that? Because my car was on empty and I needed to buy gas. He said, oh, it's just down the street. He lied like a rug. We got, we got in the car and took off driving. We was 30 miles out in the boonies. 30 miles out in the middle, in the boonies. We pull up in this oak grove, and there's a trailer house. It was the grace of God we didn't run out of gas. And we got out there, and we walked in that trailer house, and she was back in the back bedroom, and we walked back in there, and here's this lady laying there bed fast. She's 80 years old. She's a Baptist lady. Well, she thought she was. All right, all right. Amen. And so anyway, she said, I heard you on the radio. I told my husband, come get you. She said, I've been blind for two years and bed fast. And she said, I heard you on the radio, and I told my husband, go get that man to bring him out here to pray for me. And so, you know, we got to talking to her, find out what the condition was and stuff. And, and she, you know, she's laying there blind. She, came, she said, I can tell when it's daytime, and I can tell when it's night, but I can't see anything. And so... She said, I want you to pray for me. I said, well, we'll do that. And then she said to me, she said, now, I got a question for you. She said, here about a month ago, I was laying here in the nighttime, and I was just praying and talking to God. She said, I was Baptist, grew up Baptist. She said, but I was laying here talking to God, and all of a sudden, and, and let me back up. She was 82 years old, actually. She wasn't 80, she was 82. So let me get that straight. And so she said, I was laying here in the nighttime, praying, talking to God. And all of a sudden, I started speaking in a different language. She said, what was that? I said, you're not Baptist anymore. I said, that's what it is. You're not Baptist anymore. I said, now you're Bapticostal. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, so she's, she's laying there, you know. And so I said, you ready to pray? And she said, yeah. So I went and laid my hands on her and started to pray. And when I did... She started begging God. Oh, God, please heal me. Oh, God, please. And without even thinking, it just came up out of my spirit. I just said, sister, shut up. Now, I wasn't trying to be mean. It just came up out of my spirit instantly. I said, sister, shut up. And she startled her. And she said, well, well, well. I said, don't beg God for something he's already done. Amen. I said, don't beg him for it. I said, just stretch your hands out here and thank him for it. I said, because Jesus has already paid the price. I said, you don't have to beg God for something he's already done. I said, he's your child. You just, you just thank God for it. And I, I wish I could get everybody to make that change that quick. 
I mean, instantaneously, she just pushed her arms up off there, and she just started, Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you you're healing me. I thank you I'm healed. And I went to lay hands on her, and the same thing. I mean, the power of God shot down through me, and I mean, shot out through my hand and knocked me backwards. And my wife and them standing behind me, uh, they catch me or else I'd hit the ground. And as soon as that power shot into her, she started screaming at the top of her lungs, I can see, I can see, I can see. Amen. Instantly her eyes popped wide open. She could see. Instantly. Now why did it happen like that with her and it didn't happen that way with the other lady? I don't know. I'm not God. I can't tell you why. Are you listening to me? But does it matter? What matters is she can see and the other lady's healed the cancer. Amen. Does it matter whether it happened instantly? All that matters is that it happened. You see what I'm saying? That's what matters is the fact that it happened. I know this. Every time that I have received healing from God, and I've had it happen multiple times, Every time, myself personally, that I've received healing from God, it was a process. I released my faith and received my healing. And then I stood on the word and continued to confess the word and thank God for what was mine. And, and sometimes it took days until the manifestation happened. But I was just as healed the moment I released my faith as I was when the manifestation came. As far as I was concerned, as far as God was concerned, I was just as healed the moment I prayed, Mark eleven twenty four, as I was when the manifestation took place. And that's, the, that's what we have to understand. We receive our healing. Faith perceives as a real fact what has not yet been revealed to the senses. Faith says it's mine right now, even though I haven't seen it yet. Amen? See, we laid hands on some folks last night. God's power went into you. I felt it go into you. Now, if you didn't get an instantaneous full manifestation of your healing, don't, it doesn't matter. It's working in you. That power is working. It didn't go into you just to be there and hang out. It went in there to produce something. Amen? It went into you to heal your body. It went into you to set you free. It's working on the inside of you. Keep it working. Keep it working by the words that come out of your mouth. Keep that faith alive. We say it this way. Keep the switch of faith turned on. Don't turn it off. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand on what the word says. Well, what if it takes me a month? Does it matter? Does it matter? If they told you you're going to die, does it matter if it takes a month? What matters is that you're healed, that you're raised up. We was preaching in Pennsylvania last summer, Man's Choice, Pennsylvania. And so one of the pastors there, you know, that was cooperating with the meeting, her husband, he was standing in for a friend of his. They was in Vietnam together. And his friend had contracted a tumor in his brain. And they'd just give him weeks to live. Tumor was the size of a small orange. And so we started laying hands on folks one night. Healing power, the healing anointing came on me. And we started laying hands on people. And so I laid hands on him as he stood in for his friend. I believe in doing that. Some people don't. But you know what? I see where a Syrophoenician woman stood in for her daughter. And I see where there was a centurion stood in for his servant. He came to Jesus on behalf of his servant. And listen, isn't that right? And he even said it. He said, hey, I'm a man of authority. You don't have to come underneath my roof. My roof. Just speak the word. And my servant will be healed. That Syrophoenician woman? Yeah, Jesus said, you got some great faith here. You just go on home. Your daughter's well. Isn't that right? So I believe in that. I've seen it, I've seen it happen too many times. You can't talk me out of what I know is true. Because I've already seen it happen. That's like I like ice cream. I think I got some strawberry here for later on this evening. I like ice cream. You can't tell me it's not good. I know it's good. It may not be real good for me, but I know it tastes good. You can't talk me out of something I know. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. So he's standing there. And I laid hands on him, and when I did, the power of God hit him and knocked him flat on his back. He laid there for 40 minutes, couldn't get up. 
And I started praying for other people. And I prayed for about 70 some odd people that night. And every time I laid hands on somebody and they fell under the power, he told me afterwards. He said, I could tell. Now, we're out in the tent, okay? We're on solid ground. He's all the way over here. I'm all the way over here praying for people. And they fall under the power. He said, I could tell every time somebody hit the ground because it was like a shock wave, just a power that just shot through my body every time they hit the ground. It just like a shock wave went through my body. Hallelujah. And so his friend was supposed to die in just a couple of weeks. But a couple of weeks came and he's still alive. And a couple more weeks came and he's still alive. And a couple more weeks came and he's still alive. And a couple more weeks came and he's still alive. And the doctor is saying, we need to go look at something here because he's supposed to be dead. So they went and did an MRI. And when they did the MRI, that tumor the size of a small orange was gone. They had a picture over here that says it was here. Now they go over here and it's not there anymore. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? The tumor's gone. Praise God. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's well. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord healed him. Amen. But see what happened. It was a process. It was a process of time. Hallelujah. How long did it take for it to totally disappear? I don't know. All I know is two weeks came and he wasn't dead. Two more weeks came and he wasn't dead. Two more weeks came and he wasn't dead. Finally, the doctor said, we got to check something out here. He's supposed to be dead. He ain't dead. So something's going on. We was preaching there in, in Belleville a couple of years ago. And there was a lady they brought in. And she, I never seen a cane this big in my life. This, this cane she had, it came up, came up her arm and wrapped all the way up to her shoulder just about. And this big old thing on the bottom of it, you know. And she'd come in and she'd walk about 10 steps and then have to set her down in a chair, let her catch her breath. And then she'd get up and walk about 10 more steps. And then we found out that she was on hospice. She wasn't even supposed to be there. She's supposed to be at home in her sister's house on hospice dying because she had tumors in her spine. And so the doctors had said they wanted to do some kind of procedure that would because she was going to be paralyzed first, then die. And she had a short time to live and a shorter time before she'd be paralyzed. So they wanted to do this procedure on her spine. They said it could help prolong the paralysis so it wouldn't come as quick. But it wasn't going to help her from dying. And so anyway, so they snuck her out of hospice. They snuck her out of the house. Her, her nieces, you know, she went into her room and locked the door because her sister didn't want her going anywhere. And so they went in and locked the door and acted like they was in there with her. And her friends snuck her out, you know, and got her down to the tent and brought her in. So she's sitting there. And so when I started laying hands on folks to be healed, she got up and came down. And so she sat down in the chair and we prayed for her, laid hands on her. And I mean, she jumped up. When she came in, she was just barely moving. She jumped up out of that chair. John, is this true? Huh? Alice, is this true? Matter of fact, I believe we got it on video. She jumped up and took off walking just like this. Glory to God. No cane. She just walking this way. She went walking back this way. She's walking back this way. And she started laughing. And she started crying. Hallelujah. And she was shouting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So she goes home, and then the next day she calls the doctor's office and says, I want you to do an MRI. And the nurse says, why? We already told you what's going on. You need to come in let us do this procedure so you don't get paralyzed as quick. She said, no, I want an MRI. And they said, why? She said, because I got healed last night. I said, what do you mean you got healed? Yeah, I was at a tent revival in Belleville, and I got healed. The preacher prayed for me, and I got healed. So she says to the doctor, so she tells us, she's talking, to the, the nurse is talking to the doctor, and the nurse says, she said she got healed last night. And the doctor says, well, that could happen. Well, thank God he's a doctor that had some sense. So anyway, she tells him, she, I want an MRI. So she goes to the doctor. She had three doctors on the case. One of them was a Christian. Two of them weren't. And so they don't want to do an MRI. They said, she finally talked them into doing a CAT scan. So they did a CAT scan and said, we need to do an MRI. <laughs> so they did an MRI, and she had these tumors on her spine, and the tumors are gone. Wow. They're gone, disappeared. Yes. 
So the two doctors that ain't saved, they said, we must have messed up on the MRI, the first one. It must have been a smudge or something because tumors just don't disappear like that. Wow. But the doctor who was a Christian said, yes, they do. When God moves, they do. And so he got her a disc with the picture of her where the tumors were there, and now the tumors are gone. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. But see, we receive all this by faith. We receive it by faith. Now, sometimes it happens instantly. But the majority of the time, it's a process. It's a process. The thing is, is you have to keep the switch of faith turned on. Like I said, every time I've been healed, every single time it's been a process. Now, most of the time, it wouldn't take me more than 24 hours. But there was one time it took me three days. But I was healed. I mean, every symptom left, every pain left, I was healed. Didn't get cut on. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. I was totally healed. Praise God. But it was a process. I had to keep the switch of faith turned on. What I said was what I believed. The hope came because the Bible says I could be healed. But then faith began to rise as I fed upon the Word of God and began to meditate on it and speak it to myself over and over again till it became a part of my spirit man. And once it became a part of my spirit man, I spoke it out of my mouth and received it into my life, received it into my body. And from that moment on, the process had started. The healing began. And I continued to say what I believed. And listen, everything in my body turned around and lined up with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I could tell you story after story after story of seeing people healed. John G. Lake said this, though, and we need to get this. He said, when a person gets healed instantly, they've been denied the opportunity to receive from God by faith. See, there's something about receiving God from God on your own faith. The devil can never steal from you what God's given you. Amen. See, you get to a situation where the anointing's there, you know. And it's a manifestation of God's spirit. It's one of those sovereign moves of God. When the gifts of the spirit are a manifestation, that is a sovereign move of God. But we don't have to have that to get healed. We can get healed by releasing our faith and receiving what God's made available to us already through what Jesus did. Amen. And the one thing about those, those you know, when the, when the healing anointing's there, and it's moving, the Holy Spirit's moving and flowing that way, then you can get healed without having to release any faith. But the enemy is going to come for the word's sake, and he's going to try to steal it from you. When you slide behind the wheel of your car and go home, he's going to try to steal it from you. That's right. He's going to come That's through right. thoughts in your mind, or he's going to try to put a symptom back in your body. Yeah. I was preaching there in Belleville, and I had given an altar call for people to be healed, and a gentleman came forward, and he told us he had, he had severe back pain. He had been in an accident, he had had surgeries, and he had been excruciating pain ever since. And he said that when he was sitting there in the service, he said the pain was so bad, I was ready to get up and leave. He said, that's how bad it hurt. And so we had that altar call, and we laid hands on him. I set him down in the chair. And sure enough, he had one leg about that much shorter than the other one. And we prayed, and God straightened it right out, grew that leg out, and healed his back. And he testified. He said, every bit of pain's gone. Every bit of pain. I said, now you were in pain when you came up here. He said, yeah. He said, I was hurting so bad sitting there. I was going to get up and leave because it hurt so bad. And I said, all the pain's gone. He said, every bit of pain. He got up, walked around, you know, moved around, everything. No pain at all. And I said to him, I said, did the Lord heal you? He said, I hope so. I said, now, wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. I said, you said you were sitting there in excruciating pain. Yeah, he said, I was hurting so bad, I was going to get up to leave. It hurt so bad. He said, if you hadn't given all the call, I was going to leave. He said, I was hurting so bad. I said, we prayed for you. Yeah. God straightened your back out, grew your leg. Yeah. All the pain's gone. Yeah. Don't have a bit of pain. I said, did the Lord heal you? He said, I hope so. I said, no, wait a minute. Let me ask you again. Let me ask you one more time. You were hurting when you got here. Yes, I was hurting. You were in excruciating pain. You said you were sitting there hurting so bad that you was going to get up and leave because you was hurting. So, yep, yep, if you wouldn't have given the altar call when you did, I was going to leave because I was hurting so bad. 
I said, but God healed you. I said, you, you, all the pain's gone, right? Your leg grew out. God straightened your back out. You, you no pain. All pain's gone. Yeah, he said, I don't have a bit of pain in my body. I said, did the Lord heal you? He said, I hope so. I just had to let it go from there. I couldn't do anything more for him. He had an instantaneous manifestation of healing and still wasn't convinced that he was healed. Wow. And see, it was because the healing anointing was on me. And so when that anointing's on you, you can pray for people and that power's flowing into them because it's a sovereign move of God's spirit. But boy, if he don't have that settled, I guarantee he lost it before he got home. Because yeah. the devil's going to bring it back. You know what he's going to say? Yeah, that stuff don't work. Y'all with me? Amen. Isn't that sad? Amen. See, it works. It works. Amen. But we have to stand on the word. Amen. When we receive from God, we've got to keep our faith alive. And so if you're in one of those settings, praise God when the Holy Ghost falls. Amen. And that healing anointing's in manifestation. Just like it was last night. Praise God when that happens. You lay hands on people. You can feel that power. How many of y'all we prayed for felt that power go into you last night? Did you feel that? Yeah, you felt it go in. It's working in your body. It's working in your body. It's going to keep working in as long as you keep your confession right. You keep saying what the Word says. The devil comes to your mind and says, well, you really didn't get hell. Yes, I did. I felt the power go into me. And I know it's a working in me, affecting the healing and the cure. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. I am the healed of the Lord, and I say so. Amen. Amen. But if you go say, he brings a symptom back, and you go say, well, I guess it didn't get anything. Are you with me? No, we don't want to fall prey to that. Faith perceives as a real fact what has not yet been revealed to the senses. It's a faith thing. We receive from God by faith. Right. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And it relies on us. Yeah, as a minister, I have a part I have to play. I have to spend time with God. I have to fellowship with God. I have to be filled with the Word of God so that I can minister the way He wants me to minister. But then the anointing, it's up to Him to do His part. But then it's up to us to do our part. Right. Let me say this. There is a Godward side and a manward side to everything God's made available to us. Now, what do I mean by that? See, you have some people in the church world who believe that God's just simply all sovereign and God does what he wants to do and we have nothing at all to do with anything he's doing for us. Then you have those who believe you got to work your way in everything. It's a works mentality. But neither one of them's right. There is a Godward side and there is a manward side to everything we receive from God. So open your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. We quoted it a little bit earlier, but let's look at this for a moment. I want you to see something. How many of y'all understand that Jesus did pay the price? Yes. Amen. He paid the price. He shed his blood. He died on Calvary's cross for our sins, did he not? So that we might be saved. We might be born again. Luke 19.10 says the Son of Man came to do what? To seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. Jesus did what he did so that we might have life. Amen. And have it more abundantly. But I want you to see something here in what we said earlier, but we're going to look at it with our own eyeballs and see it in our Bibles. Okay, we're going to start with the sixth verse again. We've looked at this already this week before, but faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. We, see, we only got one Bible. See, that's the thing. You know, Charles Spurgeon said this. He said, you don't even preach a sermon good till you preach at least 50 times. Yeah, the more I preach, I can preach the same sermon, and every time I preach, I get something new out of it. And I'm the one doing the preaching. I'm the one doing the teaching. I get something new every time, every time. I see more light every single time. Well, it's progressive revelation. As I walk in the light I have, that he can give me more light. And then I walk in that light, and he can give me more light. As I grow and mature, he can, re he can reveal more truth to me. Hallelujah. 
But let's look at what the Bible says here. Romans chapter 10, verse 6 again. But the righteousness which is the faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in our heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend to the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now watch verse 9. That if thou, now who's thou? That's us, right? Amen, that's us. Say that's me. Okay, so he says, if thou, so that's us, shall confess with thy mouth, say, that's me, because it's your mouth that has to do the confessing, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, say, that's me, because it's our heart, it's our heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, say, that's me, shall be saved. All right, now, notice what he says here. If we confess, we have to confess. With our mouth, the Lord Jesus. And we have to believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead. And then we're saved. But we have to do the believing part, and we have to do the confessing part. We did not have to do the dying part. Jesus did. We did not have to do the shedding of blood part. Jesus did. Amen. All right, so I said there's a Godward side, and there's a manward side. So what's the Godward side? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Because God didn't send him in the world to condemn the world. That's the next verse. But the world through him might be saved. Okay. So Jesus, what was the, God, the Godward part? God sent Jesus. Why? Because he loved us so much. What did Jesus do? He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So he bore our sins. You see? He bore our sins. That's the Godward side. God sent Jesus to die. Jesus came and died. He bore our sins. He also bore our sicknesses and our diseases. He bore them for us. Okay? That's the Godward side. Amen. What's the manward side? We confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. We believe in our heart. God raised him from the dead, and we get saved because of what he did. See, what we, our side is to accept what he did. His side was to do it for us. So there's a Godward side, and there's a manward side. Because if you don't confess it, the Bible said this is how you get saved. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, and you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto what? Righteousness, or right standing with God. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. We don't just get saved because we heard the gospel. You ever hear the, you know, people take John 8, 31, and he'll run off and say, you know, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. That's not true. It's the truth that you act upon that will set you free. Because if the truth would set you free, all you have to do is make sure somebody hears the truth and they would instantly be free. Right, you see that? Yeah, yeah. If just the truth itself would set you free, all you have to do is hear the truth and you would instantly be free. But that's not the case. In order for you to be free, you have to hear the truth and then you have to act upon the truth. You have to embrace that truth let it become a part of your life, and you have to act upon it, and then that truth will set you free. Yeah. It's Amen. the truth acted upon that produces the results. Yeah. Oh, it'd be good if them just hearing it would get them saved, but it doesn't. And how many people have heard the gospel message that have never been born again? Just because they heard it doesn't mean they got saved. They have to do their part. Why? There's a Godward side. There's a manward side. Are you all listening? All right, now, when it comes to healing, it's the exact same way. Turn to Isaiah 53. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Amen. Amen. Isaiah 53, now watch what it says. Let's start with the third verse. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now the word griefs there in the Hebrew means sicknesses. 
And the word sorrows means pains. So you say it this way, not take anything from the scripture. Surely he hath borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Okay, so Jesus has bore our sicknesses. He has carried our pains. Mm -hmm. He did that for us. Now, if you want to go a little further here, and I just throw this in there for you, just a little side benefit. When you get over here to the word chastisement, if you look that up in the Hebrew, it's the word, well, I have to read it and get it, get it out because I got it written down here. Uh, I, can't, I can't read it. Can, can you read it? I, I can't read it. I'll have to get it to you back to you later. But listen, if you look up the Hebrew word, it's my handwriting, folks. It's just, it's just bad, okay? <laughs> but, the, but the Hebrew word, listen to me, for chastisement means doctrine. That's what it means. If you look up the Hebrew word for chat, go get your, go. Is it, was it what you got there? Doctrine? That's what, that's what it means. If you go get your, get your, get your concordance up, look at the Hebrew word for chastisement and the definition word of chastisement is doctrine. Okay. And then you look at the word peace. The word peace there is shalom. Amen. <clears throat> when you look up the word shalom, you'll find multiple definitions. One definition of the word shalom, all right, listen to me, is prosperity. Also, the doctrine of our prosperity is upon him. <clears throat> now, think about that for a moment. What does the Bible say in the New Testament? Though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made what? Rich. rich. Now, what does that mean? We'll be multimillionaires? No. It means we'll have full supply, That's abundant rich. provision. Amen. All of our needs will be met. Yes. See, in another scripture it says, but my God shall do what? Supply all of your need yes. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. See, Isaiah was telling us the whole thing. He was talking about our sins being washed away. Remember we said we was redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death? Yeah, we're redeemed from poverty. The chastisement of the doctrine of our prosperity is upon him. We're redeemed from poverty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He bore all of our sins. Glory to God. And he also bore our sicknesses and our diseases. Amen. Are you all with me? Amen. I said you all with me? Glory Amen. to God. That's good news, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is the thing. <clears throat> This is the thing. We have to understand, we have to do our part. The Godward side is, Jesus bore our sickness and our disease. The manward side is, receive what he did. Amen. Just like salvation. You see, he bore our sins. Amen. Our side is to receive that. Believe it, receive it, and confess that out of our mouth. That's how we get saved. It's the same way we get healed. Amen. You see that? Are we making sense to you? Amen. Are you seeing it? I tell you what, this will bless you. You get a hold of it, it'll bless your socks right off your feet and put them right back on you. Amen. Why? Because this is good news, folks. This is good news Amen. right here. Hallelujah. Now, let me take it a step further for you. Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and we, he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers as dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Now that word death there is plural. And people will fight over this. Okay, they'll fight over this. Did Jesus, did Jesus die spiritually like we were dead spiritually? Well, let me ask you a question. He became our substitute, didn't he? And in order for us to be born again, he had to pay the price for us. In order, he had to take upon himself, himself our sin. Now, did Jesus ever sin? Never, not one time. Never did he sin. But he became sin. He took upon himself our sin. And as a result of that, he had to take upon himself what we had experienced in our separation from God, and he had to be separated from God. And the only way he could be separated from God was if he did die spiritually, he was separated from God. Now, how did we know that he did that? Well, one, the Bible talks about in Psalms 88. But also, remember when Jesus hung on the cross, remember what he said? There came a time where he cried out and said, My God, my God! Why hast thou forsaken me? There came a time in Jesus' life when he hung on that cross when he took upon himself all of our sin 
And when he took on himself all of our sin, just like God had to turn away from man because of our sin, God had to turn his back on Jesus for the first time in all eternity past. Jesus had never experienced that before. He had never been separated from his father, not one time. But he had to be like we were so we could be like he is. We could be born again. So we could be declared righteous. He had to do that for us. I don't know why it's hard for people to understand that. Because it doesn't make, take anything out of or away from Jesus. It doesn't make any less of Jesus. It just shows me all the more how much he loved me. That he was willing to do that for me. So I could be restored back to God. Amen. Isn't that good news? Amen. Hallelujah. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And at that moment, God had to turn his back. That's why, listen, why do you think it was that Jesus sweat great drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane? Because he was afraid to die? No, he knew he was going to lay his life down. It wasn't that physical thing that was bothering him. It was the fact he would be separated from his father. He had never experienced that before. And he knew what he was going to have to do. And that's why he said, Father, if there's any way, any other way we can do this, any other way, let's do it. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. He's asking God, is there any way, any way? He didn't want to be separated from his father for the second, not even for a second. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. He was willing to do it for us. Boy, how much more should we love him? How much more should we love him? Hallelujah. And so it had to happen for three days. But on the third day, right there in the regions of the dam, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost shook that place. And Jesus snatched the keys from death, hell, and the grave. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And opened up Abraham's bosom. And all those Old Testament saints came out with him. He led captivity captive. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. He came up. He picked up his body. He ascended into heaven. He went up to the very mercy seat of God. He took that sinless, spotless blood. And he poured it out on that mercy seat. Hallelujah. And now when God looks at us through that blood, he sees us as those sins never existed in our life. Amen. We've never, as though we've never made a mistake Amen. because that blood has washed us clean. Amen. Oh, glory to God. That's shouting ground right there. I said that's shouting ground. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about that? I mean, if we're excited about that, we ought to be just as excited about the fact that he also took stripes upon his back they beat him beyond recognition to the very point you couldn't tell he was a human being. And they did it for us to be healed. See, what people don't understand is they'll try to think, Christians will try to think that Jesus was only hit 39 times. But Jesus wasn't beaten by a Jewish scourger. Jesus was beaten by a Roman scourger. Roman scourgers didn't have the limitations that the Jews did. A Jew could only whip you 39 times. That's why it was 40 stripes save one. He could only do it 39 times. That was under the law. But a Gentile could. A Roman scourger could beat you. And a Roman scourger was trained in the art of punishment and torture. They could take a human being and beat them and take them to the very brink of death and keep them alive so they could beat them some more. That's what Jesus went through for us. And the whole reason he had to take those stripes was for us to be healed. Amen. In my word, if he's willing to go through that for us, for us to be healed, then shouldn't we be standing on the word and getting healed? Shouldn't we be receiving everything he made available? If he paid the price, shouldn't we be experiencing it? Shouldn't we be rejoicing in it? Shouldn't we be walking in it? 
Hallelujah. People go around and say, well, you know, the Lord put this sickness on me to teach me a lesson. No, he didn't. If he did, that would make me better than God. And I'm not better than God. What do you mean by that? I got four kids. I'd never put cancer on them to teach them a lesson. If I want to teach them a lesson, I'll chastise them. God chastises us with his word. You ever been switched by the word? I, you know what I mean? I've been switched by the word. What do you mean, be spanked by the word? Oh, yeah, you get to reading the word. It'll spank you, won't it? You're missing in an area, and you start reading the word, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, that hurt. That hurt. Why? Because the word disciplines us. That's how God disciplines us is through his word. He doesn't put sickness and disease on us. And people go running around and say, the Lord did this to me for him to get glory out of it. And then a whole bunch of other Christians get on that same bandwagon. Oh, bless your heart. Boy, you're really carrying your cross. Sickness and disease is not a cross we're supposed to bear. If we can't bear our sins and get to heaven, how can we, why should we be bearing our sicknesses and diseases? That's not the cross we have to bear. You know what the cross is we have to bear? The persecution that comes for serving God, serving the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the cross we have to bear. We put this flesh under subjection, and instead of going the way of the world, we go the way of Christ, and we walk that way and let people talk about us and let them look down at us, and we just carry that cross and keep on going. <laughs> That's the cross we bear. We don't bear sickness and disease. He bore that for us. He doesn't get glory out of us being sick. He gets glory out of us being well. He paid the price so we could be well, so we could be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I don't preach myself happy. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, glory to God. This is good news, isn't it? Praise God. That's why the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. The word gospel means good news. We don't have any hard luck stories to tell. We don't have any blues to cry. We've got good news. How beautiful are the feet of them that spread glad tidings of good things. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. He satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Woo! I could feel that all the right way down my toenails. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. God. Praise Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how y'all going to be able to sleep tonight. You go home and start thinking about this, you'll be jumping up right out of bed and dancing a jig for joy. Hallelujah. Amen. So I like that song. Jesus gave us something to shout about. He washed me, cleansed me, turned me inside out. He put joy down in my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. How do you got joy in your soul? I got joy on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, he's our healer. Say it aloud. Jesus is my healer. Say it again. Jesus is my healer. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is your healer. Say it this way. Jesus is our healer. I am the healed of the Lord. And I say so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whew, my, 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 my. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My, 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 I feel so good, I don't want to stop. But I run out of time. You know, that, that thing, that thing, that thing, that clock thing. You know, in the modern day church, you're only supposed to preach for 28 minutes. Man, my introductions take more than 28 minutes. I tried to slow it down. I mean, you know, to, to speed it up, to quit, you know, yeah. sharten it up. I can't do it. I just tried. I tried my hardest. My son John and, and the wife Danny, they was ran into one of John's high school friends, and he's watching us on Facebook, you know. And so he said, yeah, so we was listening to your dad. We was cleaning up our apartment, listening to your dad, and he, he preached for an hour and 18 minutes. And he's like, it didn't seem like an hour and 18 minutes. That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. 
Hallelujah. I mean, you, you got something to say. You just get excited about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you do not. I'm just waiting on the Lord to see if there's anything he wants me to do specific. See, I just want to yield myself to the Spirit. Right. Glory. Follow him. Amen. 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 So I laid hands on people last night. The healing anointing was on me. And I'm going to be laying hands for sure on people on Friday night. But I just want to see if there's anything we need to do. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss a word of knowledge or anything. I don't want to miss any of that. Amen. All right, we'll do that. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Now, I haven't been preaching on it. But I don't know him. anybody here. Anybody here need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues? Because if you're here and need to be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, we're going to pray for you tonight if you want that. Amen? Amen. Or we'll say this. If you've been filled but you're stuck, you know what I mean by that? Stuck. You got filled with the Holy Ghost, you just stammered a little bit in tongues, and you haven't been speaking fluently, and so you don't do much of it because you're stuck. You feel stuck. We want to pray for that too. I've run across many people that's had that problem. You know, I, I, you know, there's some churches you go to, you know, they start pray for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you got one person slapping you on the back say, to, to, to turn loose. And you got somebody else slapping you on the front and saying, hold on. And the other one saying, turn loose. And the other one saying, hold on. Well, you don't know whether to turn loose or hold on. Amen. Isn't that right? Or somebody else is saying, say glory, 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 glory real fast. Well, that's not the way it works either. Amen. No, you receive it by faith. Well, aren't we supposed to tarry for it? No, not by any stretch. Who was supposed to tarry? The disciples were supposed to tarry. Jesus said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father, the endowment of power from on high, Luke 24, 49. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. If we had to tarry, we'd have to go to Jerusalem. <laughs> huh? Better, better start getting tickets and they ain't cheap. No, you know, they had to tarry till the Feast of Pentecost came. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as rushing mighty wind, filled all the house with their said. There appeared on them cloven tongues like a fire, rested upon each of them, and they all began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the last tarrying right there. Now all you got to do is receive. Well, how do I know that? Because Peter went on and preached the message after that, didn't he? They came out of that upper room. They walked through the streets of Jerusalem and speaking in tongues declared the wonderful works of God. And all those people from around the world at that time to come back to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost heard them speaking those praises in all their own language and said, what meaneth this? And some said they're drunk. And Peter got up and said, no, they're just not drunk like you think they're drunk. He didn't say they weren't drunk. Drunk means to come under the influence of. He didn't say they weren't under the influence of something. He just said it wasn't Mogan David. <laughs> huh? Or Jack Daniels. You see what I'm saying? That's not what they were under the influence of. They was under the influence of what? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. And he got up and said, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, said God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Then he went on and preached, didn't he? And talked about how they crucified Jesus and what they did to him. And then it goes, to, it goes on to say that they were pricked in their heart and said, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And ye shall what? Receive. He didn't say tarry. He said, ye shall receive the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah. They didn't have to tarry, did they? He said, no, he said, receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Praise God. Well, what happened there in, in Acts, the 8th chapter? Well, Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. They gave heed to things that spake, both seeing and hearing the miracles he did. For unclean spirits cried with a loud voice, came out of men that was possessed of them. There was a lame take with a palsy and were healed. And there was great joy in the city. Well, you'd know there would be joy, wouldn't there? But then when the apostles heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent down Peter and John, who coming down laid their hands on them that they might be filled with the Holy Ghost. For he hadn't been. They had received the word of God, but hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. So what did they do? They laid hands on them. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't have to tarry for it. And then what happened, what happened with, with the apostle Paul in the ninth chapter of Acts? 
He was on his way to Damascus with letters from the chief priests and elders, you know, to bind up those that called on Jesus. And suddenly there shone a light around about him, and he fell to the ground. And the Lord spoke to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against the bricks or the goads or spiritual. I mean, it was a pointed instrument they used to drive cattle. Amen. It's hard to kick against those things. Amen. And so he told them to go in, in the city and he'd be told what to do. Amen. Then he spoke to Ananias and said, Ananias, he said, go pray for Saul. And he said, I heard about this man. And how, the, how he breathed threatenings and how he'd come with letters from the chief priest and it combined up all those that call him. He's, he's a bad man. But the Lord said, no, 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 he's a chosen vessel unto me. I'm going to show him how great things he's going to suffer for my sake. Amen. And so what did he do? He went and he found Paul. And when he walked into Paul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, appeared in the other way and sent me that thou might receive, their, receive thy sight and do what? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So he laid his hands on him. Scales from, from his eyes. And no doubt he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Because Paul went on to say later on, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than y'all. Oh, yeah. What about Cornelius' house? Remember Peter's up in the house side, has a vision. Cornelius, he's just, you know, he, he's praying. And the angel appears to him says, send for Peter. Peter comes and begins to speak to him. And then as he begins to speak to him, the Holy Ghost, as they received the word. See, that's the key. When they received the word, they got born again. They received the word. When they received the word in their heart, they got born again. And then they got filled with the Holy Ghost, started talking in tongues. Nobody yeah. even prayed for them. Yeah. Right. There was no tarrying, was there? No. Well, what about happened in Acts 19 chapter when Paul went to Ephesus? He said, you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we not much even heard there is a Holy Ghost. He said, what baptism did you baptize with? He said, the baptism of John. So he baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus and then laid hands on him and immediately were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues and prophesy. Yes. They didn't have to tarry for it. They got it right then. Yes. Terry and stopped on the day of Pentecost. And now you just got to receive what belongs to you. That's good news, isn't it? Yes. Anybody here tonight need to be filled with the Holy Ghost or want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Anybody? Anybody that's stuck, you just haven't been flowing in it, and you want to be filled and flowing. Raise your hand if you want it. Come on, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't belabor it. But if you want it, it's a good time to get it because the anointing's here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're giving you the opportunity. And if you're stuck, we'll get you unstuck. Woo! My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're watching, if you're watching tonight, if you're listening, if you can hear my voice, if you're listening on SoundCloud, if you're watching anywhere around the world and you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight, you can get filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. You can receive it right there where you're at. I don't have to lay hands on you. You can just receive it. Peter never laid hands on anybody at Cornelius' house. They just received it and started talking in tongues. Hallelujah, this is your opportunity. You can hear me. You can see me. You want to get filled? If you're stuck and you want to get unstuck, we're fixing to get you unstuck. Now, this is the deal. This is the key. This is the key. What people think is, whenever you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that there's something going to take you over and make you do something. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He won't take you over. He gives you the unction. You're the one that has to do the speaking. When they were filled with the Holy Ghost, there in Acts chapter 2, they were all filled and they began to speak. They do the speaking. See, you just have to throw caution to the wind and speak it out of your mouth. Well, what, is, what if it don't sound the same way as you? It's not supposed to, not necessarily. It doesn't matter whether it sounds like me or anybody else. Do you know... That there is, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that we speak with tongues of men and angels. Do you know that there's over 6,000 languages on the earth? Over 6,000. So there's a good chance you might speak in one we don't speak in. You know what I'm saying? But you may speak in the same one. I mean, I've heard other people speak in the same tongue I speak in. 
And as you begin to mature and as you yield to the Spirit and you do this on a regular basis, I've spoken in many different tongues. As the Spirit wills to pray about specific things. You get on your knees and start praying in the Spirit, and all of a sudden the tongue would change, and you'd get a sense in your heart, I'm praying about something here. And the, the tongue would change, and there'd be a force with it, a, an authority with it. And you pray that thing through until you get that note of victory. That joy wells up in your heart. and say, boy, I got that one done. Hallelujah. Now start praying for something else. <clears throat> Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. The key is, is when you receive, you receive it by faith. The only prerequisite to being filled with the Spirit is you have to be born of the Spirit. In other words, you have to be born again. So if you're born again, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you qualify to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's all you have to do is be born again. Hallelujah. And it belongs to you. Well, I got to clean myself up. No, you just have to be born again. Don't you think the blood's good enough? The blood's good enough to do the job. Hallelujah. Amen. Now what you need is that power in you. Yes. Jesus talked about when you're filled with the Spirit, he said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When you get born again, see you have a well of water springing up in everlasting life. That's what the Bible talked about in John chapter 4 with the woman at the Samaritan well. Amen. Right. He said to her, he said, if you knew who it was you was talking to, I'd give you water that you never have to thirst again. Right. A well of water springing up to everlasting life. See, that takes care of you individually. But then Jesus, on that day of the feast, got up and said, If you're thirsty, come. And he said, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which they had not received yet, because he had not yet been glorified. And so those rivers are for who? They're for the masses. So you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and you pray, and that rivers begin to flow out of you to reach the masses. Hallelujah. Amen? Glory to God. We need the rivers to flow, don't we? So all you have to do is be born again, number one. Number two, when you ask him to fill you, you've got to expect him to fill you. Yeah. You've got to expect it. Number three, you have to know this. Luke's gospel says this. If we ask God for the Holy Ghost, he's going to give us the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're not going to get some other spirit. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. That's what you're going to get. If you ask God for the Holy Ghost, you get the Holy Ghost. So don't listen to these wackos out there and say, oh, you'll get some other spirit. No, you won't. You'll get the spirit of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. So you ask for the Holy Ghost. He said, I'll give you the Holy Ghost. Number four, you have to understand, once you receive that, then you have to do the speaking. But don't speak English. Well, I'll make it up. No, you're not. If you'd have made it up, you'd already done it. You're not making it up. He's given you the unction, but you have to do the speaking. See, you may, it may sound like things bubble up out of your heart, because right here, this is where the Holy Ghost lives, right here. This is your spirit, right here. Your spirit's right here. And the Holy Ghost lives right here, in your spirit. And when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, out of your belly flows, your belly flows rivers, out of your belly, comes up from here. Not out of your head, it comes out of your spirit. Your head doesn't understand it. Your head doesn't know what it sounds like. You just speak it out. It just bubbles up out of you. And you just throw caution in the wind. And you just, by faith, it's a faith thing, you just, by faith, begin to speak in tongues. Whatever it sounds like, it's not English. Why is it not English? Because we speak in English here right now. Everybody here speaks English, don't you? Okay. So if you're going to speak in another tongue, obviously you wouldn't speak English. You'd be speaking in another language. Well, what if it don't sound real eloquent? Have you heard some of the languages out there and listen to people talk? They don't sound eloquent, man. Some of them sound pretty interesting. Yeah, some of them sound pretty interesting, don't they? doesn't matter how eloquent it is. Well, I want to speak French. We don't get the pick. We don't get to choose this thing. It's the Holy Ghost that gives us the utterance, but we do the speaking. And by faith, we throw caution to the wind, and we just start doing it. And what happens? The Holy Ghost takes hold with us. And out of our belly begins to flow rivers, rivers. Well, it, 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 it's not a whole fluent language. Listen, when you were born into this earth, and then you began to grow and mature, and you started to talk, you didn't just go from saying nothing to saying full sentences, you spoke syllables. 
And you know what? Your parents was like, oh, did you hear them? Did you hear that? They said, yeah, they, 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 oh, listen to my kid talk. Ooh, they, 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 the parents are just like, wow, did you hear my kid? Oh, yeah, he said dad. Did you hear dad? No, he didn't hear dad. That wasn't dad he said. He just said something, but we claimed it. <laughs> didn't we? Moms, mom said, oh, that was mom. That was mom. No, it wasn't mom. It was a did that, did that. That's what it was. And, but we claimed it. <laughs> we just was happy to hear him talk. Yeah, man. God's our father. Yeah. Don't you realize how happy he is to hear you speak in that language? He just loves to hear you talk in it. And then you just keep talking. You just keep speaking it. And speak it loud enough for yourself to hear it. Don't be shy. Just let it rip. Well, yeah, but see, that would be out of order. No, it's not because it would be in order because that's what we're doing. It would be out of order if I'm preaching up here and you just start getting up and start blasting out in other tongues. That would be out of order. But when we're doing this, we're doing it instructed by the leadership in charge of the service. And so it's in order. It's not out of order. You see? Boy, we can eliminate a whole lot of this craziness that people get involved in, you know, and all these weird thoughts if we just think about it a little bit. It's pretty simple. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray for people to be filled with the Spirit. And if you're here and you want to be prayed for, we'll lay hands on you if you're here. But if you're watching, if you're listening, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. All you have to do is be born again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes. We're going to bow our heads. And if you're a believer, I want you to start praying quietly. Pray for all those that are sitting here, those that are listening those that are watching, pray for their souls right now. Now, if you can hear my voice and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to. Jesus paid the price. We've already talked about that. And you need to be born again. I don't care what you've done wrong. I don't care how bad you think you've been. Listen, nothing can stop you from receiving the love of God, except yourself. If you'll open your hearts and say, Lord, I want you in my life, he's going to come in your life. If you're a person that says, I've known Jesus in the past, but I backslid. I got caught up into things. I got offended. I got mad. I left the church. I ran from God. Understand this, backslider. You may have ran from God, but he never ran from you. He's standing before you right now with open arms saying, come back home. Maybe you're a church member. Maybe you grew up in church, but you don't know if you're saved or not. Understand this, church member. We're no more Christian because we walk in the four walls of a church and we turn into an automobile by walking in the four walls of a garage. We have to be born again. So if you're a church member, you can tonight, you can pray this prayer and you can know emphatically that from this moment on, you are God's child and on your way to heaven. So if you're sitting here or if you're listening, if you can hear my voice wherever you're at, if you can hear my voice and you say, that's me, I want to come to God, I want to be born again. Or you say, I'm a backslider, I want to come back home. Or you say, I'm a church member, but I don't know for sure if I'm saved or not. I want to know that I'm saved. If you fall into any one of those three areas, say, I want you to pray for me tonight. Whether you're sitting here or you're listening or watching, wherever you're at, you just slip your hand up letting God know you mean business. If you're sitting here, slip your hand up. Say, pray for me. If you're watching, slip your hand up. If you're listening, just slip your hand up and say, that's me, and slip it down. God sees you right where you're at. Yeah. All right, now this is what we're going to do. If you raised your hand on any one of those invitations or if you should have raised your hand but didn't we're going to lead you in a prayer right now the key is you have to mean it with all your heart you can't just be saying words you have they have to be words that come out of your heart you mean this you're surrendering your life to god so if that's you as i lead you in this prayer we're all going to pray it together all those that are here we're all going to pray it just to help you out and if you're sitting here, if you can hear my voice, that's you. You're ready. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I come to you. And I ask you to forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and rose again 
to set me free. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. The Bible says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart you raised him from the dead, I'd be saved. I confess that. I believe that. I receive that. Therefore, I'm saved. I'm born again. I make Jesus the Lord of my life, and I'll serve you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, that's exactly what happened. You're born again. You're restored back in fellowship with God. You can know from this moment on, he wrote to us, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, he wrote on us that we may know that we have eternal life. You can know that you know that you know you're heaven bound. But we're not taking up a load to go tomorrow. We still got some work to get done here on the earth. Now, if the Lord comes, we're going with him. Amen. But we're not taking up a load to go tomorrow. I know there's people who need to hear about Jesus, don't you? Amen. I'm ready to go when he's ready for us to go. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, now, so everybody's born again. Hallelujah. You prayed that prayer. You meant it. You're born again. You're on your way to heaven. Now you're qualified to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So if you're sitting here and you say, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody here, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight? Just raise your hand. Anybody here? Don't be afraid of it. It's not. Don't nothing to be afraid about. It. All right. Anybody stuck? You're sitting here stuck, and you want to get unstuck, huh? All right. Everybody's good. Well, I tell you what. We got a whole bunch of people out here watching. We're going to help them get filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're going to help me do it. You all ready? Now, if you're watching, I'm turning my attention to those. I'll use this camera right here. Okay. I'm turning my attention to you. If you're out there watching, if you're listening, if you can hear my voice. You heard what I said about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray for you. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. When, we, when I lead you in this prayer, you're going to ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. When you ask him to fill you, that's exactly what he's going to do. From, and, and when you get done praying this prayer, asking him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to pray and release his anointing, his power to come upon you and to well up on the inside of you. When I sense that power leave, it's at that moment that power is coming into you. And when that power comes into you, it's at that moment that you need to just throw caution to the wind and just begin to speak out in other tongues. Amen. Well, what's it going to sound like? doesn't matter. It's not going to be English. Speak it out. You're not going to get in the wrong spirit. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. That's what you're asking for. You're asking for the Holy Ghost. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. And so whenever I say, there it is, when I, when I feel that power leave me, then you grab a hold of it, and at that moment, you begin to speak in other tongues. And you just speak it out and keep speaking it over and over again. I don't care if it's two syllables. Keep speaking those syllables over and over again. And speak them loud enough for you to be able to hear. And what you do is you continue to do that, more will come. Until all of a sudden, you'll just break forth into a fluent language, and you just speak that language. And every time you go to pray, make sure you spend time praying in other tongues. Because when we pray in other tongues, we pray the perfect will of God. Romans, the 8th chapter, said, He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When we pray in tongues, we pray God's perfect will. We don't understand it, but he does. And you know who else don't understand it? The devil. He can't hinder your prayer life, because he don't know what you're praying about. And you pray, and you pray, and you pray. And keep praying. Spend time praying in the Spirit every single day of your life. But now don't go running up to people and say, hey, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost speaking tongues. You want to hear me? Don't do that. Don't do that. That'll freak people out. We're not here to freak people out. We're here to help people out. Yeah. Don't do that. This is something you can do on your own. Do it in your prayer closet. If you're around people, if you're working at the, on a job, you could be working there in a factory making widgets. And you can pray quietly in your, un, under your breath in other tongues. You can pray quietly and spend time praying in the Spirit, fellowship with God. Make all the widgets you can make. Pray. Amen. Isn't that awesome? That's what's yeah. so cool about it. But when you're alone by yourself, pray out loud. Hear yourself speaking. Hear yourself saying it. Amen. It'll bless you. It'll bless Praise you. It's a doorway to the supernatural. Amen. It helps you become more sensitive to God's voice, more sensitive to the leading of His Spirit. 
you'll be able to sense more on the inside of him. He's leading you to do things. That inward intuition. Hallelujah. So you ready? You that are watching it already? Do me a favor. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to turn around to this camera right here and stretch your hands towards this camera right here. Hallelujah. Now, you that are watching, you that are listening, I'm going to lead you in this prayer. You're born again. That's the only prerequisite. You're born again. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. You pray this prayer with me. And when we get finished, then I'm going to pray a prayer for you. And we're going to ask God's power to come upon you. And once I feel that power manifest, then I'm going to tell you, there it is. You start talking in tongues. And when I say that, folks, you that are here, when I say that, there it is. Start talking in tongues. Let's all start praying in the spirit. Amen. We're going to help them out. Hallelujah. So now repeat this prayer with me. Y'all can pray this prayer with us. It'll help them along. Father God, I thank you that you are my very own father. And I am your very own child. I am born again. And I ask you now to fill me with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives me the utterance. I receive it by faith. And I thank you when Brother David prays and that anointing flows out, when that anointing touches me and he says, speak, I'll start talking in tongues. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your anointing. We release that anointing. There it goes right there. That's it right there. Now just start talking in tongues. So let's all start praying in the Spirit. Se vede donja so tor da sice bele ba fronos sa dana ma frede ha so tonda radice se le ba frede. Hallelujah. All right, now let's all stop. Let's all stop. All right, let's all stop. Let's all stop. Okay, come on, let's all stop. Listen to me. There's a reason why we all want to stop right now. All right, now you that just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you that just received it. Now what I want you to do, we're all going to start speaking in tongues again in just a moment. The reason I want you to do this is because I want you to know you can do it whenever you want to. You don't have to have something come on you for you to speak in tongues. You can do it whenever you want to. You do it by faith, just like you received it. You pray in tongues by faith, but you can pray whenever you want to. Some people think they have to have some power come on them all the time. No, once you receive it, you can pray in tongues whenever you want. So right now, let's pray in tongues again. Drasice se non do ranance calaba fredege, blessuto romasite le mafrana. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now let's just lift our hands and praise God for the people that got filled with the Holy Ghost. People that got saved. Father, we thank you for everyone that got saved tonight. We thank you for everyone that got filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. We give you glory for that. We thank you their life will never be the same. We thank you they're moving up higher, Father. In the name of Jesus, they're moving up higher. And we give you all the glory for that. Hallelujah in Jesus' precious and holy name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, those of you that are watching, if you got saved, you got filled with the Holy Ghost. Right now, I want you to, what you, I want you to do what you see on the bottom of the screen. I want you to, you know, I want you to call us. I want you to email us. I want you to let us know that you accepted Christ, that you got filled with the Holy Ghost. We got some literature we want to send you that's going to help you with your walk with God. We got a little booklet we're going to give you. It's called Why Tongues. It tells you why you should pray in tongues and the, the wonderful reasons and the things that it does for you to be a blessing to you. We want to send that to you so that you have 
have something that will help you in your walk with God. Amen? Let's just give everybody a hand that got right with God, that, that got filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God forevermore. Praise God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Well, how do you know anything happened? I'm a person of faith. I believe, glory to God. God said his word that goes out of his mouth will not return void, but will accomplish what he pleases and prosper in where it's been sent. The word's been sent. Amen. Glory to God. And if you got it tonight because you didn't want to raise your hand, let anybody know you got it anyway, then praise God for you too. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's easy. It's easy. It's a blessing. It really is. It's a blessing. Glory to God. Oh, you can be seated. Amen. Lord, anything else before we go? We just want to follow the leading of the Spirit. I don't know about you. I'm glad I came tonight. Did you, did you get blessed tonight? Did y'all get blessed? Well, I got blessed. I'm so blessed right now. Hallelujah. Did you get blessed, sir? Amen. Yeah, amen. What's your name? <laughs> Blank and shit. Huh? Well, shake my hand. No. No. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm just a picking on him. Praise God. I'll tell you what, I had a good time tonight. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here. The anointing's here. God touching people's lives. Amen. My word, my word. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. I said it last night, I think it was, I'd rather be here in the best hospital in the country. Wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Praise God. God's so good. He really is. He's so good. Amen. Well, remember, tomorrow morning we'll be here at 1030 teaching on the subject of faith and healing. Has it been good? Has it been good? It's been really good, hasn't it? Now, remember this. If you would like to have CDs of the services, all of them will be available this whole week from Sunday morning through Friday night two services a day. They'll be available free of charge. All you have to do is sign up for them in the back. Now, even if you're here in the church, you still have to sign up because we, we have to get a new CD printer. You can get these ones, these little cheap ones, and they print one about every five minutes. We have one that prints one every five seconds because we give away thousands and thousands of CDs. And they're all free of charge. And so we have to be able to do them fast. Well, we want to get one for we can bring with us that's rack mountable so it doesn't get destroyed in the moving process and so well we don't have that yet because i'm trying to work in the, the company talk them into building it for me so anyway we have to produce them at home and then send them back down here but we have to know how many copies we need to make so you have to sign up back there and tell us you want them you know, just because if you just because you come to church and say, well, I'm going to get the CDs for free. Well, we won't know that you want them unless you sign up. And so then we will send them all down here and they will distribute them to you. Just come by the church and pick them up. And so but sign up and let us know you want them. They're all free of charge. And then we also have other CDs back there for other sermons and stuff that we've taught and preached. You can watch us on YouTube at there's victory number four you. That's our YouTube channel. We've got over 200 and like 40 or 50 videos on there. You can go watch those videos as well. You can watch us on Facebook if you like. Uh, we encourage you to go on there, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe. If you have us on Facebook, make sure you share it with your friends. Amen. If you just hit, set it up and every time we do a sermon, no matter where we're at, whether we're in a church back in Belleville or where we're doing a tent meeting or preaching in another church somewhere, as soon as we go live, you're going to know it. And then all you have to do is hit share. And if you've got 10,000 people in your, you know, friends on Facebook, it's going to go right to them. 10,000 people that quick that have a chance to hear the gospel. Isn't that good? Boy, you see how fast that can get, that get out there? All over the world. Amen. And we have people watching us, we know for a fact, in over 55 countries and over 210 cities. Amen. So praise God for that. But we encourage you, go on, subscribe. Hallelujah. Like it. Amen. And share it with people Amen. because we want to get the message out. We got the opportunity to take advantage of this technology. We need to use it. We can do it, both of them, free of charge. It doesn't cost us a penny. Used to, you'd have to pay thousands of dollars for airtime. Now everybody's going the way of the computer and phone and stuff. You don't have to pay. It's free. That's awesome, isn't it? Take advantage Amen. of the technology. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get Amen. the gospel message out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So. Glory to God, if you're interested and in, 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 you want to be on our mailing list, 
You can sign up for that. We'll let you know where we're at, what we're doing. We will not send you stuff every week. It will not happen. I don't like it when I get all this stuff every week. We do not do that. How many of y'all are on our mailing list? Do you get stuff from us every week? No. no. If, we, if we're doing something, then we'll send you something out telling you where to do something. If we're doing a meeting, tent meeting somewhere, we may send you out a flyer so you can pray for us. But we, will not, we don't ask you for money either, do we? Right. Nope. We never ask you for money. We're not doing, we don't do that. All we do is let you know what we're doing so you can pray for us and believe God with us. Amen. Amen. So if you want to be on our mailing list, you can do that. Don't have to worry about it. We will not sell your information to anybody. I don't like that either. Drives me nuts when all of a sudden I, got, I get all these emails from 10,000 people. Who are these people? Somebody sold my email. You know, we don't do that ever. I don't like it, so we would never do it to you. But if you want to know what we're doing, where we're going to be at, then you can sign up for that as well. Ah, uh, anything else? Testimonies. Yeah, if God's touched you. God's touched you since we've been here. If, they've, if God's touched you through this ministry, get a testimony sheet and write that down so we can share that with other people and inspire them to release their faith and receive from God as well. Amen? Hallelujah. Do that for us. It's a great blessing to us. Anything else, honey? That's it? You got anything? I got a few things. few things? Okay. Make a few things. Let me make a few announcements. You don't need a mic? You want a mic? Yeah, you want a mic. That's why you said that. I don't think I need a mic. Yeah, you do. You want a mic. Hello, Mike. There you go, Mike. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to say everything over here on this side on the table in that rack. Them racks are free if you want to find something that catch your eye. They're free. So, you know, if you want more of God's work, you know, we can't get enough of God's Word. That's right. Amen? Amen. Fill and refill, you know. Well, when, you, when, you, when your gas tank says it's getting on E, it's not headed east neither. No, that's <laughs> right. But when you realize you got, you're got going empty and you got to fill it up, that's what you got to do with the Word, praise God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So, uh, praise God. Be back tomorrow. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's praise him just for a minute. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, thank, thank, you, Lord. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. For Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We exalt you, Lord God. We exalt you. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. From the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Woo, Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. The highest form of prayer is pray. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Hallelujah. Because he's already done it. He's already done everything that we can, we can have right now on earth. We can have heaven on earth. Yeah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the precious word. Yes. Hallelujah. That we receive Most it with gladness. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, because My. your word works in our life. Yeah. In our man. We've been yeah. quickened, dear Heavenly Father. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. As we go Woo. our ways, Lord, we give you praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. We plead the blood over everything, yes. Heavenly Father, yeah. that comes against Rush that. We're protected, dear Heavenly Father. As we go our homes way, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for your protection. Yes. And we'll come back tomorrow bringing somebody with us. Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. In the name that's right. of Jesus, hallelujah. Yep, Amen. hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Glory to God. You're dismissed. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them. Praise the Lord. Amen.